Oh, you stop it. Oh, oh. You talk. Hey, good to call the meeting to order. Would you please join me in a pledge of the flag and then remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one to God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please keep in your thoughts this evening. Uh, retired employee, longtime employee, Don Mason, <clears throat> is recovering from a, a very serious operation but he is recovering we wish him well and uh, mr mike uh, ramos uh, plumbing instructor uh, passed away and also the men and women uh, protecting us around the world hey okay, thank you very much when you have a moment would you call the roll for the purpose of uh, attendance please miss disla Mr. Hayden? Mr. Cirillo? Here. Ms. Fitzgerald? Here. Mr. LaMontagne? Here. Okay, Superintendent. Very nice part of the meeting. The uh, exceptional Reggie for this month, would you uh, please present, please? So this evening, we haven't had a. We haven't had an exceptional Reggie for a while, but. Uh, we're fortunate tonight to have one of our dental assistant, a career student uh, with us tonight that we want to recognize. Uh, her name is Michelle Bat Batista. Uh, Michelle has been a student at Greater Lawrence, Region Greater Lawrence Technical High School sub since September 2019. She is studying in the dental assistant career program. She is OSHA and CPR first aid certified and has extensive skills in her career area along with experience in patient care, record keeping, sterilization, and infection control. Michelle has had field placement experience at Dental Arts in Lawrence, Mass, and is currently employed at Andover Pediatrics as a dental assistant in Lawrence through our co-op education program. Michelle has been successful in her academic and career area coursework at Greater Lawrence with a 4.43 GPA, 
and is currently ranked second out of a class of 405 students in the class of 2023. Michelle is enrolled in our concurrent enrollment class with Middlesex Community College and will graduate from high school with nine undergraduate credits. Michelle was awarded the Boston College Book Award as a junior due to her outstanding academic and community service record. Michelle was also our school's nominee for the uh, MVA, MASS, CTE Secondary Student Award for the school year 2022-23. Michelle has made contributions to our school community outside of the classroom as a Reggie leader and a member of the Interact Club. The Interact Club, through its work with the local Rotary Club, has sponsored events and community service in the city of Lawrence. Michelle has also given to her community outside of school by volunteering at Veterans Breakfast to recognize local veterans at the Andover Elks Lodge. Michelle is also part time is a part time cashier at Market Basket in her very busy schedule. Congratulations to Michelle. And I'd like to present her with the certificate. Thank you for choosing Greater Lawrence to, to come to Greater Lawrence. Very good. Okay. Moving on. The minutes from uh, January 17th. Have a motion on those, please? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Oh. oh. Can you call the roll, please, for the, uh, the minutes, please? Ms. Fitzgerald? Ms. Disler? Mr. Hayden? Yes. Mr. Cirillo? Yes. Mr. Lamontagne? Yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. DiStefano, our cash, balance, uh, our cash balance report, please. Accept the motion. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you very much, Jerry. Uh, consolidated cash reconciliation is a handout given. Revolving funds is in your packet. Budget report is in the packet. Are there any questions on any of those uh, documents? Okay, Ms. Montel, budget transfers, please. Yep, so the budget transfers are in your packet. I broke them out um, by salaries and expenses. 
So the salary journal entries are basically cleaning up all the accounts that have negative balances. And I'm using um, some positions that were funded by Perkins, um, reallocating two administrator positions to the correct budget line. Um, and then the rest of the revenue is coming from positions that weren't filled on the expense entries. It's the same thing, cleaning up all the negative balances and then um, fixing a couple of accounts on the credit side that um, when the budget was built, I think the account numbers were used in error. Okay, do you have a motion, please? So moved. Yes, um, I understand totally why budget transfers happen. I was just concerned that as much of it went into salaries as did versus program expenses or whatever. So I was wondering um, what that situation was that we either hadn't budgeted or we have new positions but um, it seemed like a fair amount of that money was going into salaries. So on the salary side, so I, I look at the budget, um, I always look at it, salaries and expenses, so I kind of look at it as two budgets. So to break it out this way is kind of just for me to keep it organized. But on the salary side, I like to see where the overages are and where I have savings. So a lot of the savings came from two positions that were funded by a grant this year yeah. that were budgeted for, but then we moved to a grant. Um, and then some of it is just reclassifying um, like positions that were originally on one line, I've moved them to another. Um, and then there were some savings from positions that weren't filled or were filled mid-year. So I'm just kind of like sweeping through those accounts and putting the money where it belongs. If I'm reading this correctly, mm -hmm. on the first group of transfers into the credit side, um, the uh, in discipline, the professional salary had uh, $142,000 put in. That was one that caught it. Then same thing in the um, athletic department, the uh, was a large transfer again, and so yep. was that an additional? So I reclassified um, Ms. Gillis when she was put into a different, into an assistant principal role, so I changed her account number. Okay. So there was an overage there, but a, a negative amount where I put her, so this just corrects that, All and right. the same thing on athletics. Thank you. You're welcome. I see here there's automotive equipment. I'm imagining it's for the new part of the building, but wasn't all that already budgeted? There's $12,000 going into supplies, which I can understand the supplies increase, but automotive equipment for 10,006. Is that for the new uh, portion of the building, Mr. Lillie? Yeah, we have. Ha I've had some requests from some of the departments to buy some additional. Like, in, uh, that might have been for a lift. They asked to buy. They asked to uh, get a specific lift to, per to uh, uh, that they wanted to change one of the lifts to a different type of lift. And because we had, uh, we felt as though we had excess money in our account this year that we could move it into this year's budget. Uh, so that's uh, why you're seeing. Uh, that added into this year's budget, where you see it as a debt, sort of uh, transfer the money in to cover that that request. Thank you. Yeah. Anything further? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, Ms. Martell, I believe you're still up. I think it's to is it to revote the budget? It's, yeah, the revote, yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Yep, that's fine. Um, so with the completion of the fiscal year 22 end of the year report, um, I discovered that we didn't meet net school spending by about $1.6 million, um, <coughs> but we were under the 5%. So um, to 
remain compliant with Chapter 70, we need to reallocate that money to our budget this year. So I'm asking to re-vote the budget at um, the 39053523 which was our foundation budget, plus an additional $1,616,887, which is the money that was unspent from fiscal year 22 that we need to move to fiscal year 23. I have a motion, please. So moved. Do you have a second? Second. Um, Ms. Martell, uh, well, that also will affect the communities, won't it? It won't affect the communities? Uh, reimbursement? Okay. Yes, uh, Francis, Frank. It's okay, Leo. Uh, thank you. Um, and, I, and I understand that, we'll, that we need to um, vote on this, but I don't have any documentation showing the numbers. Was that? I can give you a copy of the end of the year report, which shows the 1.6 um, carryover into fiscal year 23. So I, I can give that to all of you. Okay, is, is that a deal breaker, Ref Frank? I mean, are we going to move forward with it or what? I mean, you're st she's still going to get you the information, but let me just say, do we? Oh, you have it here? Okay. Uh, can, can we move forward with it or do you want to table it? I know we have to, but it's, it's not the end of the year yet, so I, I don't think it's, it's a make or break thing. But. Okay. Anything further on it? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you very much. Communications. Donations. <coughs> 2007 Toyota Tundra, valued at $6,475, donated by Mr. Vernon Stevens from Andover, and a 2007 Volvo, valued at $3,400, donated by Ms. Jillian Gray, also from Andover. I uh, see no articles here, and uh, don't believe any public participation. Uh, John, your report, please. Update on the new program approvals, please. So um, we uh, got a, a final approval yep. from the Department of Public Institute. We got a final approval from the Department of uh, DSE uh, on aviation, child care, and programming. We're all approved, and uh, we're now working on Part B, which is due on March 3rd. So between the Part B approval to getting ready for Part, I mean Part A approval, getting ready for Part B approval, very short window with a lot of work to do. So uh, we feel good about getting that work done. But particularly in the aviation program, there's an enormous amount of work that we have to do to uh, prepare for Part B. Once Part B is approved, uh, then uh, the next uh, aspect will be for the Department of Ed to come in in May to do a f an inspection of the space that uh, that the programs will be located as well as looking at curriculum and doing a safety inspection of the space uh, meeting with our advisory committee for those programs as well that'll all happen uh, in May and then once that's completed we'll get a final okay to start the program uh, in September so uh, we're on target we are meeting just every day our CTE team is meeting um, for a good part of the day to work on the project of uh, getting part B completed and ready to go uh, so there are some action steps that we have to take in order to be ready and prepared in which I will be uh, requesting a vote from the committee a little further into the meeting uh, around aviation for the most part. Child care space uh, is uh, looking pretty good in programming, um, determining where that program will be located. Uh, looks pretty good at this point as well. So uh, I think we're in good shape for those three programs. Uh, looking good to open them next year at this point anyways, but uh, still lots of work to do to, to finalize everything. Questions uh, concerning them, anything? Okay, John, the, uh, the, the purchase of a, uh, a hangar for aviation, please. So um, one, of the, uh, one of the main requirements for us, the, probably the biggest challenge we have is aviation and having, finding a home for them out at the airport. We have to, in order to get that program approved, we do have to have a hangar. 
Um, we are also building some space here, a hangar space here at GLTS, uh, which will take you know a year and a half to two years to complete. But there is a hangar for sale out at uh, Lawrence Airport. Uh, it's on the market for three hundred twenty thousand uh, dollars. I've been in contact with the owner and a representative who is doing the work to sell the hangar for them. Um, and um, I, at this point, what I would need from the committee is a vote to continue negotiating the purchase of a, of that hangar um, uh, in order to have that space ready for. Uh, to put in our report for Part B that we do have, uh, in fact, a space that we're going to uh, deliver that uh, program, instruction for that program. So um, I would entertain a, a, a vote from the committee to move forward on, on that. Is the uh, recommendation, negotiations. recommendation on the table about purchasing a hangar for our, our new uh, aviation program? Can I have a, a motion on that, please? I have a motion. So move. I have a second. Zoila, you have a question? Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, so I didn't hear. Hangar. To like, yeah, they basically, the like a, a big garage where big you keep their airplanes in. Airplanes. Yep. You all set, Zoila? Uh, Mr. Hadem? Mr. Lavoie, you said we're going to be building space here. Where will we be building the space here? Would so, it be connected to one of the buildings or is it out back? Yeah. So if you remember, we put in for a, a grant. Uh, we put in for $5 million next to the pool, yes, which we were approved for $4 million. So uh, that's where we're going to build this, the uh, space uh, here at the school for the hangar. It will include a space to uh, to do teach the students how to repair airplanes, but also have some classroom space as well. As part of that plan, also we did some, we got uh, some preliminary drawings done for the back of the school, for two smaller additions to add more classroom space, um, because in increasing uh, student population to for these three new programs means also a need to increase space for classrooms as well. So the, uh, we had preliminary drawings which were sent as part of this grant proposal. When we got the grant, uh, the drawings for the aviation program and the two spaces were submitted as part of this grant for approval. Uh, so uh, util utilizing the funds for those three projects have been approved uh, by the state to utilize that money. And then we also anticipated using some of our ESSER dollars that are uh, being, which we'll have to put some amendments in. So we looked at that as well. Uh, and we're also looking at possibly going to our cities and towns, which uh, we may be an option. Uh, we're working, we're waiting for the architects to uh, get back to us on uh, some more concrete numbers on the costs. They gave us some preliminary numbers, but um, more concrete numbers that now that we have uh, approval to move forward from the, the state on these programs. We're working on those numbers now to come up with more concrete to see if we need to uh, maybe ask for a little more capital improvement money uh, in this year's budget. We may be okay. We may need an extra 500000 We may need an extra million, but we're trying to figure that out now. The new classroom space will be dedicated to the aviation program? Uh, no, the English, math, science, well, uh, academic programming, as well as some related theory program for the aviation program and some of the other programs, but also includes space for academic programming. Well said, Mr. Hayden. Excuse me. Yeah, Mrs. Fitzgerald? I, I, it's kind of related to oh. the motion that's on the floor in terms of deciding what to do. But you said that you have uh, are working with the architects for classroom space for academics, correct? Yes. And so my overall question is how many st additional students, freshman students, are we looking to take in with our three new programs? Yeah. So we're looking to somewhere around 
40 to 45 additional students this year in freshman class. And are you anticipating we'd need one new English teacher, two new English teachers, new science teachers, math, and so on? How many of each subject are you anticipating to be able to handle that? And then in terms of the classrooms that we're looking at, um, is I'm assuming that there isn't a single inch of space right within our own confines. Have we ever thought of using what was affectionately once known as the dog track, the um, space outside of the shipping receiving area? Uh, it the used to be with the business courtyard. office. Oh, the courtyard. courtyard, thank you. Yeah. Not yeah. the dog track, the courtyard. Yep. Um, so, uh, like, I'm thinking modular classrooms. It's your or gambling so addiction. I don't understand it. <laughs> yeah. So, so we have. Um, we're looking to just increase by one academic uh, staff member moving into next year. Right now, that's our anticipation. Each, each of the academic each areas. Discipline. Yeah. Yeah. One of each. Each of the academic area. Each of the four core subjects. English, math, science, and social studies. Um. One more question. Certainly. Okay. Related to this hangar, have, has the discussion gone so far as perhaps the owner would be looking to make a healthy tax deduction um, <laughs> as a, uh, all seriousness, as a goodwill gesture, whatever? Has that been discussed at all? So interesting you should ask that because I told Frank this morning when I was talking to him about it that my first attempt will be uh, trying to have it, see if he would be interested in <coughs> donating. The person who owns it, as my understanding, is very wealthy. He owns hangers all over, the, all over the country, and this one happens to just be one that he hasn't had a lot of interest in, <coughs> and so was looking to, uh, to get it off his hands. So that will be my first attempt uh, is to uh, so I've got the person that's overseeing this uh, sale for him. I've asked for a meeting with the owner because he's the owner has put it in his hand. But I've asked for a meeting with the owner so I can approach him uh, and put together a little presentation why, how it would benefit students and benefit kids in our area if he would consider that. So that'll be my first attempt. And then if that doesn't work, then how can I reduce the cost? Mr. Sotero? One follow up to that. Is this person that owns the hangar a local businessman, or he just happens to have a hangar here for when he comes to do business? Yeah, uh, my understanding is not a local businessman. I think he, he lives in Connecticut, I believe. And uh, so, my first, before I sit down and talk with him, I I want to learn more about who he is and where his interests lie, so I know what are the right conversations to have with him that might uh, have an impact on him in terms of wanting to help us. So I think I need to know more about him and so I can educate him about who we are as well. And and uh, so that is something I'm working on right now. And I've asked the gentleman who's overseeing uh, the sale of the hangar for him uh, to get back to me after he spoke to his the owner to uh, have a meeting with me. It seems like the owner's not really that much interested in doing anything but getting rid of it. So. Anything further? John, as far as, oh, yes, Mr. Hatem. John, just a, a follow up on that. How are we going to publicize these programs? I know we talked um, the day after the meeting. I'd asked you if we can get in touch with the PR firm that handles us, find out what they're doing for us and how they're doing it. I know Cassandra's in the building. And she does a fine job. Yep. I know our numbers are up, and that's fine. But I think we should start thinking now about keeping them up. Yeah. Can we get in touch with the PR firm and, and tell them what yes. I mean, we're paying these people? We don't know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. We, we will be contacting the PR firm. I was trying to see and get a little more uh, to know that we had this um, hangar out at, in the air, at the airport as well as a little bit more of what preparation here at the school so I could report on what our preparation is at this point in terms of uh, opening the programs but we will be putting something out there very soon publicly out to the community um, what the plans are in terms of uh, GLTS growth with programming with, and some of the other major changes with inside the building so there is also the 
um, uh, upgrades to the space in the shop and some of the change. I want to do an article that encompasses it all. Um, you know, everything from upgrading a lot of our programs that exist now, as well as new programming, uh, and as well as uh, looking towards the future, increasing enrollment and the impact it has on the community. So more of a very comprehensive uh, uh, article out there. So, and we'll do that sometime in March. Through the PR firm, am I correct? Yes, with the PR firm and some of their expertise. Yes. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes, looking, I'm, I'm trying to think as big as possible here. Going back when our renovations and, and building were happening and we had 20-something modular classrooms down back, but we also had a satellite campus over off Broadway, um, and I think we had three shops in that satellite. And each day of the week, um, the students would be bused there, and an administrator went. We took turns doing it, going over there and being the administrator of the day in this satellite campus. So when our students are basically going to be off campus over there, have we thought through the ramifications of the busing that would be included at some point added on to this already amazing document um, and then what personnel would be required over there would we have to have a nurse there uh, um, so I I don't want to I don't want to say I don't want to jump the gun but has every last detail whatever been thought about on having an entire program off campus and and what personnel it would be necessary to do it safely. Yeah, so we have lots of experience on do, running programs off campus. So we have our house building program, we have nursing programs, dental programs, we have a lot of programs that are off us. So the, the closest thing I could say that uh, we have, a, um, where we take kids out to build a house that are on stagings on a lot of real serious uh, environments in terms of ensuring sa student safety and and so the aviation program would be similar it would be an off-site where the instructor would be the lead person with regards to the only one that would be out at the uh, at the classroom environment which would be the aviation and the a number of students that would be there at any one given time plus the inside would have to meet all the state regulations in terms of the environment of a classroom so we have to do, you know once we own it then we have to do some work in designing the inside and making sure there are bathroom facilities safety facilities all of that um, training for the all of our instructors have uh, first aid training and CPR training and all that so all of those things will have been thought about and uh, I think uh, we have also been in communication uh, we have a consultant from uh, Westfield Academy who's working for us who they also have the same situation where they have a, uh, a aviation hangar out at the airport and looking at we've looked at their space and we've had conversations with them he's helping us design the space he's also helping us with equipment helping us with curriculum so just yesterday, the team that's working on developing the um, uh, Part B for the final approval uh, has been in communication with him. We pay him a consulting fee. He helped us with Part A and is helping us with Part B. Uh, very knowledgeable, very excited to help us uh, through this process. And so we'll be Westfield Academy, which is, they have, they're the only other aviation program in the state. They're the only aviation program in the state at a, at a secondary level, uh, and they have quite an extensive program there. Where <coughs> they have um, they have 21 or 17 airplanes and uh, one jet and and two helicopters in their program. Um, so they, but and they haven't been in uh, existence about four years. I think the program hasn't been around all that long, um, but they were the first and um, seem to be very successful. Uh, and FAA, FAA, we have to have not only state, meet state um, uh, curriculum uh, frameworks, but we also have to meet FAA's 
uh, curriculum frameworks and safety regulations. So the FAA has assigned a consultant to us to help us develop our program and get it off the ground. So there's a, uh, is a year and a half process just to get approval from, you can't open a program without FAA approval. And so they, uh, they are on our advisory and we have a person that I've already had communications with, um, uh, close communications with him. We'll be meeting with him on a regular basis to help guide us to make sure that we're meeting their standards as well. Okay, Superintendent, uh, when you talk about uh, purchasing a hangar, you mean just the hangar, right? Because it's on leased land, right? Yeah, so the m land belongs to the city. Nobody owns, no one can own the land out at the airport. It's owned by the city. All you're doing is lease We're leasing the land, um, no, but the we'll building. own the building. Yeah, right. And have the ra rights to leasing that land. So, so, and it has to be, a, also, ha the purchase of the hangar also has to be approved by the air airport commission out at, at, in Lawrence and also has to be approved by the state. So there's a long process once we've decided that we would move forward in purchasing it, you know, just getting an agreement on the purchase of it, then we have to go through that process of having it approved and uh, they have to accept us as a, as a tenant on, at the airport, the airport commission. So we'll have to meet and, uh, with their board and uh, have conversations with them regarding uh, the value that it brings to the airport and to the community um, as well as to the state. So there's still a lot of work even on that to, to accomplish once we have uh, actually decide we want to move forward. And we don't know the cost of the lease, right? We don't have any idea. Uh, it's, I think it was 50 cents per square foot. It's 20 cents per square foot. Yeah, uh, per square foot uh, to lease it. This is for sure. Minimal amount of money. I promised almost the last one. Um, have we had that conversation? I would think that would be step one. Are we even going to be welcome there? So that conversation has already happened. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We've already we've been at the airport several times and met with some of the people from the commission, uh, and as well as the airport manager, who's very much in favor of supporting and helping the process. And the commission's pretty excited to have us come on board. So we feel good about that. Anything further? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Oh, she carries. Okay. Um, John, update on the uh, school projects. If you haven't covered them already. So, uh, uh, first project, let's, uh, we'll talk about the Reggie Cafe is now open. Been open, I think, a couple of weeks. The one piece that's still not in yet is the refrigeration for the pastry. Set. That's the only thing that's not in yet. Uh, my understanding is coming in Thursday, but I've heard it 15 times now. It's coming in on Thursday. So hopefully this Thursday it really shows up, but they feel pretty good about it. So that's the only thing left to put in there, and that's totally done. Um, the four winds, and it looks really great. Um, and the four winds, um, the only thing left in the four winds to do really is... Um, finish the tables, which we're going to finish next week. So we've taken the old tables, we're taking the tops off, and we're putting, uh, we've uh, built new mahogany tops for the tables. And the mahogany we got last year from the church in, uh, all the pews from the church in Methuen last year. We took all the pews apart, we planed down, so we have some really beautiful mahogany that will match our, uh, our, our glass door that's in there, our, um, They'll match the tables. Uh, it's all the, the tables are all glued together. They need to be uh, planed and sanded and completed, which we're going to complete over vacation, uh, February vacation, uh, and we're looking to. Um, uh, we've already looked at a few different model chairs to purchase. Uh, if they're not in, we're looking to open it uh, the second week of March. Uh, if the chairs aren't in, then we'll utilize what's there until they do come in. But two of the places we've looked at for chairs, uh, it's about a four-week uh, lead time on the chairs. So um, we are, had looked at keep it, taking the library chairs, but we're going to use them for another purpose. Uh, the equipment that's in the library, we have another use for all that uh, furniture, so um, that won't go to waste and it'll actually be utilized uh, for some educational purposes and for some... Um, meeting purposes and other things uh, so uh, 
that'll be good. The furniture for the library is coming in next week, um, and so that project will be done as well next week. Uh, the four winds will be done, be ready to open the second week of March. Um, Child Care Center, uh, we have a designated date of opening March 13th, taking children in on March 13th. The space is pretty much done. Uh, they're going to do a big cleanup on it tomorrow. The custodians, or was it tonight? I think the some of the custodians were coming in early today to clean the space, the, the child care space, because it's construction's pretty much done for the most part. A few little uh, things to get done on it, but uh, for the most part done. All the inspections that are necessary are happening next week, electrical, plumbing, um, alarm systems, um, the uh, occupancy, and we hope to get the occupancy permit next week. And then on the 28th, the state is coming to do a, f the state uh, is coming to do a final inspection. Uh, and if that passes, we'll get our license and we'll be ready to open for March 13th. We, would, uh, we were going to target March 6th, but just in case there's a blip and they want us to do something, um, let the, I let staff know yesterday our targeted date was March 13th to open. Uh, so, um, and it, it looks really good. Can, I mean, can, I think the space looks great. Can you hold that thought, Mr. Savillo? Uh, John, we're going to have a grand opening for the um, child care program? We, we are. Uh, we are. We're going to, what we're going to try to do is uh, have an opening once I know we got the state approval on the 28th. Uh, the following week, one night that week, we're going to try to Put an, have an opening for the staff after school to view it and then uh, after that once it's open we'll do an opening what I'd like to do is a, an opening for all three spaces at w on the same night have a, maybe we could do it on uh, our next school committee meeting uh, at five o'clock to let do a grand opening for the community from five to seven or something like that where we can have services but we are going to have an opening, a grand opening for that as well. For those uh, cosmetology, Four Winds, Reggie, and the Child Care Center. Um, and um, we won't be, a, we're hoping to have the windows in by then. If the windows were in, we could do also automotive, but um, we're not quite sure if that's going to be the case yet. Anything further, John? Anything further? Uh, I think that's it. That's it. Okay, uh, moving on, uh, out-of-state travel for Ms. Jacqueline Hunter, Instructional Technology Specialist to travel to Pennsylvania Convention Center for the Professional Development and Leadership Exchange at the ISTE Conference on June 24th through June 28th. The cost is uh, $3,180.76. Have a motion on that, please? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, John, transportation bid, please. There was, so, a, there was a, excuse me, there was a handout also that was given to us. Okay. Right, so um, we put out a, a, a invitation to bid uh, for a new bus contract. Uh, the uh, RFP that went out, uh, Melissa put it together. She did a really an exceptional, outstanding job in putting it together. Uh, was very well, uh, very comprehensive. Uh, I think went far and above um, clarity and um, uh, touched upon everything that's critical and important, touched upon many of the things that we had challenged with over the last few years to try to uh, get a contract that would put us in a better position to hold the bus company accountable. So I, I do want to uh, commend uh, Melissa for the well done work that she did on that um, and uh, we got so it went out we got uh, the bids were opened uh, I should say the bid was open we only got one bid um, and it was the same company that, ha that we uh, have service from now North Reading uh, busing company and I'll let Melissa go through the, the numbers with you on what they came in at and what the increase is over what our existing contract is so the numbers are a little bit um, shocking, I thought. Um, they came in for the first year, it's a 25% increase over what we're currently paying for regular transportation. Um, 
But it is, we do need to note that the bus company didn't increase our prices for the last two years. So we were due kind of a big increase. I was actually projecting an 18% increase, so this was even higher than what I thought. Um, you guys all have the numbers in front of you. Do you have any questions? I don't have a question, but I would be totally remiss this is the most comprehensive document. I've been looking at these things for a lot of years, and the work that went into this, the detail is outstanding, and I really have to compliment you and thank you for a job really well done. Even though you couldn't control the price coming in, it, it is so accurate. Thank you. Mr. Sorello, did you have a question? Mr. Sorello? Uh, we didn't, they didn't charge us more, but we were paying more than any other school district in the area um, during COVID. So this definitely to me is an insult um, from the bus company, especially when their services to us has been more than lackluster. Um, so the unfortunate part of it, I guess they're the only game in town right now. Um, but we have to really look at something moving forward. Okay, uh, on the bus contract, so your recommendation, Superintendent, is? Oh, I'm sorry, Zola, sorry. So this is the new, con the new, the bid, like the total. What's the old, what is the, um, well, the prices that it used to be? It's not here, right? I don't think I have the exact number in front of me, but we're currently at 1.4, I want to say it's like 1.47 million. And this is now 1.7. The new, the new number? So. Year one, that's year one. Yep. That's year one. Yeah. 1.7. Okay, anything further? John, your recommendation is? I would recommend we go with the, uh, uh, with the bidder, uh, that their proposal for the contract, as we don't have any other options, actually. I have a recommendation from the superintendent. Do I have a motion, please? So moved. I have a second? Second. Discussion? Frank? This is for how many years? Three, three years? Three three years. With uh, two years. Extension if we so desire to do that. Two year option if we uh, at that time decide, decide that we want to extend it for those two years. We're about to, if we find a bit something better, can we get out of this contract? Not if we sign a three-year contract. Well, there, there are mechanisms in the, in the contract, in the bid, that if they're not providing the service as stated in the contract, that we do have an out. But, I mean, the problem is we'd have to go out to bid again, and the reality is we'd probably just be stuck with the same company. Yes, I know that John was going to meet with the people at Whittier to see how viable their program is. I know it's been in place <clears throat> forever, but at the total price of this, I guess we have three years to figure out if we can afford or be able to run our own fleet of buses. So if we pass this tonight, it gives us some time if the committee wanted 
to go that route to really delve into whether it was a viable option or not. Uh, thank you, Leo. Um, I'm going to agree with you, Marilyn. And I was out there with John. So I know that um, we would have to, it's going to take time to build what we need. And the unfortunate part right now, if we could do it today. I would jump all over that, but we, it's going to take time. Um, and looking at finances and what, what we can actually do in the purchasing of the buses. So at least three years will give us time to really look at something. Anything further? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> okay. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Just, so, just a quick comment. Yeah. So, you know, albeit we don't have con any control now that we have a new bus, this new bus contract, the one thing we can look at is late runs and athletics and all that. If we can provide any of that service, it would save us some money. So we have, you know, mini buses and other options. And we've tried to utilize even our mini buses we have here, but the challenge is getting bus drivers. So we've offered, now we've offered the um, custodians a 5% increase in their contract if they're willing to get a, um, a 7D license. So then we could utilize them and really save some money. But, and I've spoken to almost each one of them individually, I ha I've had no takers. So it's really hard to get people that are interested in r driving buses. So, but if, if down the road we came up, you know, uh, continue to try to pursue that, we could save a little bit of money. Not a substantial, but we could save some money uh, by doing some of that, uh, uh, that work ourselves. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, 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 Frank? Uh, sorry. Um, so we were to get people to, to, to drive some of the vans and buses. Would it be just the evening? Or would yeah. it would, yes, it would only be um, to, uh, to uh, different events. We, uh, you need a CDL license to bring students back and forth home. But to do the other kinds of activities, you can do it with a 7D license. So those are the kinds of things we could do where we could do, you know, take the kids to the different track events or athletic events and bring them home. I mean, bring them back to the school. What we can't do is drive them home unless you have a CDL license. Anything further? Certainly. <clears throat> okay, John. Uh, Admission report is in the packet. Student Achievement Award for High Need Students in the packet. Do you have any questions or comments? Do you have any comments on those documents, John? Uh, just a quick comment. Just a, just a quick comment on uh, the award, the new award uh, uh, that the commissioner is putting out. The new award program that the commissioner is putting out. So basically, what he's doing is. He is putting out an award for high need students who perform uh, well in the uh, MCAST. So he's going to send out certificates to the school and some kind of gift certificate to award to the students. It's supposed to start this year. We, I haven't seen any names. We have to provide them with the names and everything, but I haven't seen. I just We just received a communication from him. He will also provide a letter to those students who are recognized. So this is a new... Uh, award program that he's starting, but uh, I did put in your package just so you're aware of it uh, that he's uh, starting this new program. Okay, um, John, you update the committee on the advisory board uh, recommendations of safety. On the advisory board recommendations, um, I have uh, met with each of the individual, uh, Melissa and myself, actually. Um, and the CT director have met with the supervisors of the different programs to review all the ad advisory recommendations for sa uh, not only safety but all the recommendations. And um, Melissa and I will be moving uh, meeting this week. We were talking about it today to look at 
what uh, we could fund this year, but we will definitely target all this, ensure that we're meeting all any of the safety concerns or areas of safety that need to be addressed. We will definitely address those this year and quickly to get those resolved and then some of the other recommendations. But I believe almost all the recommendations, I think um, we could probably figure out some way of, for the most part, funding those recommendations uh, before the, even before the end of this year. So we will update you on those exact projects or activities we'll be doing to address those recommendations uh, at our next meeting. Okay, uh, super, excuse me, Superintendent, uh, update the committee on the legislative breakfast coming on uh, Friday, March 24th, please. So we will be uh, having our uh, yearly or annual, or I don't think we've had for a couple of years because of COVID, but we'll be uh, doing our annual legislative breakfast this year, March 24th, uh, which gives us time to talk about uh, special funding with them. Uh, that we might be targeting um, before uh, the April when they start putting their uh, getting their bills uh, organized at the House and in the Senate. Um, we do know that uh, uh, Representative uh, Moran, Frank Moran, is already um, moving a six a three billion dollar uh, bill through the uh, House and in the Senate. There's also a bill to try to provide more funding for putting additions on and expanding access f uh, for vocational uh, education. Uh, and some, uh, some of that funding can go for new schools, but a big amount of it is to expand existing prog uh, schools programming. Uh, and so we'll be doing uh, work with MAVA to ensure support for that. I will also be giving you some uh, communication on that bill as well to uh, ask you to uh, submit a letter to our legislators. Maybe we could do it as a, as a committee as a whole. I'll put a letter together to have the committee sign off on uh, to support his bill. And um, I'll give you some more detail both on that bill and a few other vocational bills that are gonna be uh, uh, submitted uh, in this next legislative uh, year uh, at our next meeting. and um, But that particular uh, legislative breakfast, we'll be talking and looking for support for that. Also, some of our own, uh, such as if we decide that we want to expand uh, and we need more funding for any of our existing projects or expansion of the school for adding on once we have our final numbers, uh, there's a couple other special programs we're looking at to try to provide more access here at GLTS for some of our high school students that do not have access now um, that we may be looking for a bill. Uh, but at our next meeting, uh, I will give you more comprehensive report on uh, long-term ranges. I'm gonna do you, give you a preliminary report on my five-year strategic plan next meeting where uh, an update on, on the work that's being done on that, which will include some of the long range plans for um, expansion uh, of the school programs, student enrollment, all of that, uh, so that um, it will be outlined more clearly for you before uh, the uh, legislative breakfast, so you uh, will be um, educated and understand, uh, also have the opportunity to weigh in on uh, what you'd like to see in whether you like the vision or the ideas before anything is presented at the legislative breakfast, I would like to get your input on all of that. So I'll present that to you at our next uh, school committee meeting. Frank, did you have a question? No? Okay, okay moving on. Uh, report from committees, see none, all business, uh, district committee priorities, policies. This is, this is for sure. What was exercise or what? Yeah. Okay, we're not we're not uh, there yet. we're not there yet. So just you can new business. There's three items on table matters: position, title change, part-time or full-time positions, and dental assistance. Is there any need to pull any of those off to speak about them this evening? No. Okay. Well, John. I think I think we may have in posting dental assistant. Do we put that in this? This one, Susan. We are looking to uh, uh, post for a dental assistant to re 
for a replacement for next year, okay. Okay. but also. Wait a second, I got to pull this off of. Need a motion to take the position of dental assistant instructor off of the table. I have a second. Discussion. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Continue, John. I'm sorry. Just okay. So we're looking, uh, I believe we're going to have it on postings tonight, uh, looking to hire someone for dental assistant um, uh, to replace a dental assistant teacher that's going to be retiring uh, in September. But in order to um, start, because there's only three instructors in that program, we're looking to bring on somebody early to uh, get trained and to get familiar with the curriculum uh, for next year and uh, fill some of the voids of particularly clinical work that, that we need uh, another person to help work do some of the clinical that we do outside of the school. So we'd like to bring in that person at this time uh, and be better prepared for next school year as well as meet some of the needs of this completing this year's clinical work that's going on outside the school. Any questions or comments? Mr. Hatem? John, didn't we have the Director of IT's position posted? Uh, yes, we do have that posted and um, we, we have a committee, we have a subcommittee working on that. They're actually meeting tomorrow to make final decision on the three candidates are going to inter start interviewing. Uh, so they're going through that and also are putting together the questions. They're meeting tomorrow morning on uh, two of those uh, aspects of it so they can start interviewing uh, soon. One other question. I asked this before. You said you were going to get the answer. Did we get all our computers back from the last IT director? We did get everything back, yes. Okay. Yep. Getting off track here a little bit. Okay. Uh, can I, at this time then, can I instruct to, to take the dental assistant instructor out of table matters at this point? No, take it out totally. It won't list. It won't be listed again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. So we're all. I, I don't need a vote on that. I just want a consensus that everybody's happy with the superintendent's explanation. Okay. Personnel consideration report. Resignations. We have a special ed instructor effective. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> Oh, HR business? Yeah. Yes. Um, With the part-time and full-time, you want to discuss that? Yeah. Yeah, we should okay. discuss that. I have a motion to uh, a recommendation from the superintendent to take part-time to full-time position uh, out of table matters. So a motion. Do you have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Go ahead, John. So now that that contract is completed, uh, we would like to... Uh, have the HR uh, business office specialist that helps with the H helps the HR director, also does some work in the finance office, uh, from part time to a full time position. Uh, I think uh, the time that uh, the added time would take a lot of the pressure and support the HR director in keeping up with uh, a lot of what's uh, been on her uh, plate. Uh, would make a huge difference in staying on top of that as well as supporting uh, the work that happens. I think it also what I think might help us um, I believe in uh, I think we're looking for someone to also learn some of the responsibilities of payroll and that that we don't have now that that person might be able to uh, learn in in, uh, in case something were to happen. So we would like to move that person to full time. Do okay, we have a recommendation from the superintendent to have a motion, please? So moved. Oops, one of you is going to do a second. Okay. Discussion? Questions? Comments? Yes, uh, Zoila? Wasn't that part of the negotiation? The full time to, the part time to full time? Was it part of the negotiation? Uh, no. No, it wasn't. It wasn't? No. no. John was bringing this after we started negotiations, so we tabled it until after the negotiations were completed. So are you saying the negotiations completed? Yes. That's clerical. Clerical. Okay. That was done last week, right? Went out. Okay. Uh, John, is this a union position? Is this a representative position? Or human resources is usually a contract position yeah. because of the del delicacy? Yeah, this is not a new position. Okay, and what would the impact be for us to go for her full-time? 
money? Well, to the end, it would be minimal money for this year. It's only the difference between, uh, I'm not sure what her salary is or what the amount of money, but it's, it, it's not going to cost us all that much money. We can well afford it, um, given the vote that you made tonight also. Uh, but I would say that um, this would have minimal uh, impact on our budget even for next year. All, anything further? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? We can remove that also from the uh, table matters. Moving on to personnel consideration, resignations, uh, special ed instructor, uh, effective uh, January 24th, uh, 2023, leave of absence, assistant principal, effective January 11th, 2023, culinary arts instructor, effective January 19th, 2023 uh, EL instructor effective uh, February 27th 2023 history instructor effective February 27th 2023 I'm sorry oh and uh, school uh, adjustment counselor effective February 28th 2023 did I state something wrong oh okay yeah uh, okay retirements I see none appointments we got a John uh, well well, yeah. I just had a question on the leaves of absence. In my mind or recollection, I thought a leave of absence had a start and an end date. Are these just? I don't know. John, do you have a? Most of these leaves have end dates, but they're just not listed here. The approximate, they have approximate end dates. Some of them are firm. Some of them are not totally firm because they're. Some are for maternity leave, paternity leave, different various reasons, but um, but most of them do have end dates. Might be a good idea, Superintendent, without mentioning the people's names, to to put the um, the re you know, like I said, without mentioning their names or even you know their position. I, I'm other than what's here, you know. But I mean, culinary arts instructor, there's three or four of them, uh, you know, maybe so that the, the committee would have an idea, you know, sure, what it uh, might be in the future. Yeah, we can give you the end dates if we, uh, for the ones we do know in yeah, the future. Sure. Absolutely. Okay, uh, retirements, none. Uh, appointments, uh, Ms. Sheen Davis, uh, electrical instructor, January 23rd, 2023. John, our uh, job postings, the following will have to be voted on, ladies and gentlemen. John? Uh, dental assistant instructor for teacher contract replacement position. Uh, aviation instructor for teacher contract that's a new position so you're seeing here some positions that we, we'd like to post for the new some of the new programs uh, we're projecting that may be difficult to find instructors in these areas so we do want to get a posting out as soon as we can but these are all for the next school year so the aviation instructor for teacher contract child care instructor for teacher contract program in instructor for teacher contract uh, uh, in evening, or do you want to vote on those? Why don't we on vote on that? Uh, those four right there. Have a motion on those, please, as presented by the superintendent. Second. Discussion. Yes, Mr. Hatem. Um, John, the retirement positions. Why are those coming before us? Can't you just replace the teacher who's being retired? We're not adding a position. Where, where are you, Jim? Well, the dental. First one, you're talking about a dental and assistant. A school counselor position it we says uh, replacement posted, posted yes but they yeah. don't have to come before us for a vote do they well th no but we've always had the practice to bring it we've, we've always, always made it. that we've always had that practice in the past that's the only reason I'm bringing it forward okay, okay. Uh, we had a mo do we have a motion in a second yes. yeah this this discussion all those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Continue, John, please. Um. Evening adult auto collision repair instructor, two for $65 an hour, $65 an hour for 280 hours of instruction, $50 an hour for prep time, March through June 2023, Monday through Thursday from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., to be supported through a contract with the Commonwealth Corporation for a career 
Technical Initiative Grant awarded for an occupational skills training program for adults. This is an annual position that we've posted uh, and continue this pro particular program to support uh, adults who are unemployed or underemployed. School counselor, guidance counselor. No, that's, oh, that's been taken off. Let's just yeah. do this one here, John, okay? okay. If you don't mind. Evening adult auto uh, collision of a second. Second. Of a, any discussion? John, when it says um, supported through the contract, does that mean the Commonwealth Corporation for Career Technical in Initiative Grant, they're paying the whole, they're paying the whole thing? Yes. Okay. Yep. Anything further? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, strategic plan. Uh, uh, the last one is a strategic plan focus committee. We're looking for eight staff members to work 20 hours, each of them uh, to be conducted after school hours, 2022-23 contract uh, agreement for their salaries. These are new positions that uh, I think you have a, a post a uh, description <coughs> of their duties they will uh, perform as a committee member. Have a second. Okay. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Future agenda items? The March District Committee meeting, John? So in um, on March, the committee meeting for March 15th, 14th, I think it 14th. is. 14th. 14th. I won't be here. I'm going to be off on vacation that week, I'm taking the week, that week, particular week off. Um, so I'm looking to move like to ha see if the committee would be uh, minimal to uh, moving that uh, meeting from the 14th to what did we decide now? The 28th. Yes, but then the, the budget. So we were, all right, so. Okay, a little excuse, confusing. excuse me one second. You got a head, Sue? I'm sorry. I said it. Before we came in here, there was a discussion about the budget, um, the vote. Um, and the 28th of March may be a little bit too late. So I think, right, Melissa, we were thinking of canceling the February 28th and having a March 7th and a March 28th. Okay, this is so, news. This I is know. New. Okay. So that that's what we discussed. But Melissa, can you explain a little bit yep. more? So the reason for it, please. We'd like to present the fiscal year 24 budget but we're waiting for the numbers from the governor, which are supposed to be out at the beginning of March, maybe the end of February, but um, we don't want to wait too long to present that to you because we do want to get those numbers to the towns. So, if But if we, they're not out by March 7th, there's no need to meet then? The governor's numbers should be, I, I should have them by the 3rd, so John and I can present the budget to school committee, I think it's on the 7th, March okay. 7th. If they're not out, there's no need to meet then? That's my, just my own. I'm not saying they're not going to be, yeah. but uh, I think stranger things have happened in life. True. You know what I'm saying? That, that's yeah. all. So want to make a pre preliminary uh, meet for the uh, the seventh, if uh, if if needed, if, and then we will skip the 14th still, yep. and then meet on the 28th. Okay. Is that agreeable to uh, to everybody? Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm going to Puerto Rico, so I'd be happy to take you. You guys can help me with the language. Uh, in any case, uh, so what that would mean is we would still have our February 28th meeting. Then if we need a budget, we would uh, provisionally right now or, uh, determine that we will have a meeting on March 7th, and then we'll have a meeting on March 28th, just so that everybody's clear. So it would be the 28th of February, the 7th of March, and the 28th of March right now. No. Oh, yeah, we're not going to have the 28th. We'll cancel that one. Move that till the 7th. Oh, okay. So we'll move okay. the 28th to the 7th right. and so then the 28th. Meet no matter, even so we won't meet again till the 7th of March. Our next meeting will be March 7th, and then the meeting after that will be March 28th. I'm pretty sure we're going to get the numbers for March 7th. I have, uh, there's been a lot of communication with different people who have the governor's ear. Uh, people uh, like the uh, executive director for Mars has been in communication with her office. Good. There's a pretty, uh, there's a commitment to have it ready for the end of her, she has a commitment to have it ready for the 28th, somewhere around the 28th of February. 
last word is she's really working hard to try to meet that commitment. Very good. I hope she's successful. Um, anything further? Okay, does everybody understand the, rec the motion on the table? Oh, um, go ahead. I'm sorry, Frank. Can you repeat the motion? Okay, the motion is um, that we are going to um, eliminate the March 28th meeting. We're going to meet, I mean, February 28th meeting, excuse me, February 28th meeting, meet on March 7th and March 28th. The, for the 14th is, is not going to scrap. Do you have a motion on that? Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes, I had another agenda item looking towards the meeting on March 28th. If the superintendent could report or give us a report of the actual plans for classroom spacing for our three new um, projects and the actual spaces that they will have. So the programming, the childcare uh, is pretty obvious. And then um, will there be a place in the building? Should we not have the hangar immediately? Where would we be putting them? So uh, a report, because I'm really nervous that we have just bitten off so much all at one time that in order to take these students in, knowing that it's greatly expanding, um, you know, the other parts of the building, so from cafeteria space and so on, uh, that we could see at least a preliminary plan of what's happening that would be like six weeks from now? So I'd, I'd be happy to do that. I'll give you a complete uh, comprehensive plan on um, how many staff members will be new for next year and where the, where they'll be situated in terms of classroom space and shop space. And then moving forward over the next three years as these three programs become fully enrolled, what the spaces we need and how we're going to meet those needs. I'll have that all for you in, in, on that 28th, March 28th. Uh, under superintendent's, uh, the superintendent portion. Yes, Mr. Hatem. One more, please. We're not expecting to lose any existing disciplines to uh, make room for these people. We're not losing any of the shops. Uh, w there's no plans to uh, close any shops at this time. Anything further? Yes, uh, Frank. Uh, I want to touch on something that Tom had mentioned. We were supposed to have an update a report on the marketing piece uh, for this meeting. Could we have that for the next meeting? Uh, sure, yes. Put that under the superintendent's uh, report also. Please. Uh, okay, anything further? The executive session? Yes. Uh, yes. For, uh, Contract negotiations? Yes. Okay. Chair will accept the motion to go into executive session for the so purpose of contract. All those in favor? Aye. Any would oppose? Uh, would you call the roll. Do you have a moment, please? Ms. Fitzgerald? Yes. Ms. Disla? Mr. Hayden? Yes. Mr. Cirillo? Yes. Mr. LaMontagne? Yes. We'll be coming back here to adjourn.
Okay, meeting's back in uh, regular regular session. Superintendent, uh, you have a, uh, rec a recommendation or a, a request? Excuse me. Uh, I would uh, ask the committee to... Your, your microphone, John, please. I would ask the committee to consider uh, allowing me to sell back uh, enough vacation days to bring me down to 30 vacation days, which is somewhere between 20 and 25 vacation days to get me down to 30 vacation days on the books. There's a recommendation. I have a request of the superintendent. Can I have a motion? Have a second? second? Discussion? Did, did you your hand up? No? Okay, I thought it was. Yes, uh, Zoila? Yes, I just have a comment. I just want to make it public that I believe he should take those vacations instead of selling them. That's all. Okay. Anything further? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Could you call the, the roll, please? We have a moment. Ms. Fitzgerald? Yes. Ms. Disla? No. Mr. Hayden? Yes. Mr. Cirillo? Yes. Mr. Lamontagne? Yes. No further business seen this evening. The chair will accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Uh -huh. opposed. Remember, we are meeting March. So you're send out an email. Yes, I am. Remember, we're meeting March 7th, correct? Okay. And tomorrow the mayor's coming. I oh, no, so tomorrow the mayor's coming at 11.30? Actually, it's moved to 11. Oh, 11? It's up to 11 today. Am I right, Sue? Between 11 and 11.30. Okay. Yeah, it got moved up a little bit. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Is this a tour of the school there? Is this something uh, special? Uh, there's a special award being given. Award ceremony? Yeah. Yeah. And a tour. And a tour. And a tour and lunch. And lunch. Not being wise, yes. guys, but you can all leave now. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to believe. Don't you feel the wild? Yeah. <laughs> no, they're just shocked that we're out before 7 30. Is it before 7 30? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Make me a hero with my wife, uh, Mr. Hayden. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I, can I help Thank you? Out? Oh, you gave me the heart? No, oh, no, this, oh, this, no, this is for Marilyn. Marilyn, thank you very much. Oh, thanks, so Marilyn. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Tell Debbie I doubled down. Oh, okay. Don't eat them on the way home. Oh, okay. Cool. Don't eat them on the way home. <laughs>